Welcome, everybody, to another Manipause.com Manipod podcast. We have a really, really interesting guest today because he's a Manipause man at heart. It's Joe Hall. He's a banker at Goldman Sachs, has been for almost 18 years, but deep in his heart is a passion for creating art. And over the years, he's made several short movies, and he decided at this mature age to take a sabbatical from his job and film a movie that he wrote that is gonna be released next month, I believe. July 8th. Uh, July 8th, it's called The Road to Galena. It's a fascinating story that sort of mirrors his own life. Cole, you're not going to quit your job to become a farmer. You know I've always wanted to do this. You've got a romantic notion of a life that doesn't exist. You got a fancy house, fancy car, so what, you think that gives you the right to tell me what to do? What, are you jealous? Is that what this is? Well, what would I have to be jealous of, Cole? I have L and the farm. Two things you've always wanted. I have been waiting for this moment for 30 years. This is my shot. Life doesn't just happen to you. It is a series of choices you make. This isn't what I wanted. I never signed up for this. The firm, the house, the club, it's suffocating me. Maybe it's time you start paddling instead of floating down someone else's river. And find the road that leads us home. And so welcome, Joe. We're happy to have you here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, wow. Yeah. 18 years at Goldman Sachs. Yeah. You can afford to make a movie, right? Oh, no. Well, look, I mean, it's a... Uh, Nobody puts uh, their own money into a movie, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, we we had a uh, we had a great community of folks that that uh, got behind the picture uh, that helped us to to put it together and you know it was uh, it was interesting to choose this moment in time of the COVID pandemic to shoot this um, in large part because so many so many of the uh, of the pictures that that paused or pictures that were delayed were delayed because of an inability to get a completion bond um, because no insurer was writing a completion bond during uh, during COVID. And hmm. so we saw it as an opportunity to uh, um, to uh, rally the troops and, and get folks who've been a part of this for a long time to uh, uh, get behind it and to put the picture together at a time where I feel like uh, the story really needed to be told, you know, in this period of uh, this global reset post pandemic where people realized, you know what, life is short and time is not unlimited and um, all sort of took a breather and said, hey, what am I, what am I doing? Uh, and am I where I wanted to be? Uh, the whole great resignation uh, mm -hmm. moment. And so uh, I felt like this was the time to get the road to clean uh, out to the world. So that's great. Right. This was your passion. Obviously, you've yeah. had for many years because you've made several shorts and you directed all of them. Yeah. Did you star in any of them? No, uh, no. I, I have not. Uh, I do really badly uh, in front of the camera, but um, but I, I am happy to say that uh, all of my kids have been in my movies, uh, and my wife uh, is in the road. She has a cameo in the Road to Galena, so. Uh, we did make this a family affair and Ava Independent, which is uh, my production company, is named after my daughter, Ava. We, we saw the trailer for Road to Galena. It's beautifully shot. I mean, as if you've been doing it for the last 20 years. Um, tell us about that. How did you make that happen? So much of the uh, story is actually shot in and around Galena, Maryland. You know, when we were uh, considering where to shoot the film, we looked at South Jersey, we looked at uh, Carolina, we looked at areas where the tax incentives would be most supportive. And our producer, uh, Eric Bannett, uh, who is Baltimore based, a lot of our crew is Baltimore based because Baltimore has a, a very deep bench with, you know, The Wire and House of Cards and Veep. And there's so much, so much of what is set in Washington is actually shot in Baltimore. And it was Eric's suggestion that we actually shoot in Galena uh, because uh, he said, and he was right, he said, you know, you shoot a picture in a community, uh, a small community, and when it's about that community, 
the community is going to embrace it. And uh, and during during the height of the pandemic, we needed all the support we could get. So we <laughs> shot uh, we shot it in and around Galena, Maryland, Chestertown, Maryland, and um, and then offset that with Washington D.C. And so um, our VP, a fellow by the name of Clark Vandercrift, who is uh, just a phenomenally talented cinematographer, uh, um, he was able to really capture the majesty of the whole Eastern Shore, which is a really interesting community because you have this blend of this very bucolic uh, agricultural uh, landscape and you have the Chesapeake Bay, which sort of winds throughout it. So it creates this really interesting community. And it was important to be that Galena and Washington DC be characters in themselves in the movie. And so that when you're going back and forth, you can begin to get a sense of where Cole's head is and where his heart lies. So it was scripted as being in Galena. You just yeah. weren't sure if you were going to film it in Galena. That's right. Yeah. 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 It wasn't yeah. originally the road to Peoria or anything like that. <laughs> it was always yeah. Galena. Yeah. Yeah. It's always. Yeah. So how much of a, you know, uh, obviously from a socioeconomic point of view, it may be a little bit easier if, if you're, you know, professional in a, in a, in a really, you know, a reasonably paying kind of field, uh, but still, how much of a challenge was it for you to step back from your day job and go out and do this full time? Was it nerve wracking? Were you concerned that uh, maybe you were making a colossal mistake or how did that work? No, yeah, no, I, I never felt concerned that we were off in the wrong direction. We had a great team from the get go. Um, the state of Maryland, uh, Jack Durbis, who's the film commissioner in Maryland, he was my first telephone call. And we had, we just had a, a amazing support and a great crew from, from day one. It is, you know, having shot a number of short films, the process is, you know, by and large similar, but shooting something of this scale is a much bigger endeavor. And we had a six week shoot. Uh, um, it was, uh, it was a wild ride. And, um, you know, shooting during the pandemic, shooting on the Eastern shore of Maryland, uh, on the uh, outdoors, most of it outdoors in the spring where it usually rains every other day. Uh, <laughs> we didn't have a single rain delay. Uh, um, we had, um, you know, we had live animals. We had, had all kinds of things that could go wildly wrong and miraculously everything uh, went like clockwork. So we really lucked out. And, um, and it also, that setting gave us an opportunity to, to bubble up and shoot safely during COVID because the SAG COVID com compliance guidelines were very stringent, uh, understandably. Mm -hmm. But because we were so remote, we were able to keep the cast and crew, uh, you know, highly secure. And, um, and even when we were shooting, the locations we were shooting on gave us a lot of flexibility there. That's, that's great. I mean, we, we had, Larry and I had a, a similar high when we shot the Manipause pilot presentation, uh, 30 minutes, uh, a 30 minute uh, pilot presentation, but the high that you get being on your own set and being in control of your own set, it's unbelievable. And you got six weeks where we got four days, right? But I, I, I woke up every morning and could not wait to get to set. Couldn't yeah. wait. And I mean, I loved every second of it. And in the whole process, I mean, writing, writing the road to Galena was a, uh, it was a, a long, uh, in some ways, arduous process of getting, you know, unloading all of this. Uh, um, and it went through many iterations, as you might imagine, but, mm -hmm. uh, but I love that exercise because you come to know these characters so well, you know, you, you're living with these characters for years in this case. Uh, um, and then going through the whole pre-production process, through production, every element of the exercise, you tell the story over again through a different lens or through a different angle. And you get to post and sound design, you tell the story all over again and in the score all over again and in the lighting and the color correction, all of that. And so it was, it was a really wonderful exercise, the whole thing. I, I just loved every second of it. And, um, uh, and can't wait to do it again. So, so uh -oh. take us back, because you're, you, I assume you're over 50. Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay, so take us back 30 years uh, when you were sort of defining what your life was going to be. Yeah. Was this your passion or was working as a banker your passion? 
You know, this has always been my passion. Um, and and I, had a, I had sort of an odd route, I, I, even an odd route to Goldman Sachs. I, I worked in higher ed for a long time. Uh, uh, and then had some uh, had an entrepreneurial venture in there, and then and then came to Goldman. So I've had an unusual path to Goldman and a very unusual path to uh, to being a filmmaker. But this has always carried with me. I mean, from my from my early you know grade school days, I always had I loved movies and I loved um, still love telling stories and storytelling. And uh, um, so this this jump of actually going from thinking about it every day on the drive to work uh, to actually doing it was actually the motivator was a conversation I had with my brothers. I, I'm the youngest of six kids and my oldest brother retired early to do this round the world sale. And my, uh, so the, the four, um, the five brothers, including him, were all together in Annapolis and we were, we were talking about the, his adventure. And I said, Dave, you know, I'm really envious of what you're doing. If I was ever going to, pull the ripcord, I think I would shoot independent movies. And he said, well, what, what are you waiting for? And I said, well, I said, you know, <laughs> Goldman is reasonably busy. And uh, I've got at the time, you know, I've got three young kids. And, and he said, Joe, look, you know, it took me a lifetime of preparing for this. He said, you can't just expect that someday you're just going to start making movies. He said, you got to do it. And so I was so motivated by the conversation that I, I, immediately began the process you know I formed Ava Independent and started shooting the short films to begin to learn the craft and uh and then started writing uh The Road to Galena so um and it's you know this notion of uh, um just not giving up you know you just you just don't give up and um you know if it's important to you you just got to hang in there we interviewed a uh, a guy who's a life coach. He, he, he's called the Limitless Coach. His name's Mark Fournier. And that's one of the things that he emphasizes to people that are trying to kind of figure out, you know, how to re uh, realize their dreams is that it really is all about persistence and belief. You have to believe that what you want to do is what you want to do. And then if it is, you have to persist because it's not going to be easy to get there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, um and I had it. There's a. Uh, we did a, a private screening in D.C. after we finished uh, post, and then we did one in New York, one in L.A. And a, a director I know who's in New York came to the New York screening, and he said um, we were talking afterwards, and he said, you know, he's done some very major pictures, and he said, 95% of movies never get made uh, um, because they just, you know, they just die under their own weight. And he said, of the 5% that get made, he said, you should feel good. He said, I think you're you know, better than 95% of the five that get made. And he said, but it really comes down to just grit. You just got to keep, you just got to keep going, you know, when, and, and I think that's true in any industry you're in. If you're yeah. really passionate about it, yeah. you just never say, you never, you know, never say no. Larry, Larry and I went to the Austin Film Festival in 2017. And we heard speakers, you know, writers talking about their projects. Marta Kaufman was one of them who wrote Friends and Grace and Frankie. And she was so motivating that when we left there, we said, what are we waiting for? And as we're in the lobby of the hotel, there was a woman that walked by and you could see her crystal blue eyes as she's walking as if it was Bo Derek with the wind blowing, running across the beach. Right. And we both looked at each other and said, that's that's our girl right there. And I said, let's go talk to her. Let's cast her in this show that we're going to do after after being there for a couple of days. Went up and talked to her. We booked her and she's in our she's in our uh, in our pilot. Right. Oh, that's awesome. And she's awesome. But we saw the character walk in front of us and it was so inspired like it was in slow motion. Yeah, you know, she was, was just walking. Crazy. We're we're turning like this, looking <laughs> at her, and it was like, boom, that's her. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that was that was inspired. Now, here's another thing that when we interviewed, we did a podcast with Marta Kaufman not not too long ago, and I asked her. I said, you know, so much of it is timing as well. You know, she did Friends, so I asked her. I said, you know, you had a big hit with Grace and Frankie. Um, could you have written Grace and Frankie? when you were doing friends and she said no 
absolutely not because I didn't have the life experience that these yeah. characters need to have. Do you feel yeah. the same way? Um, you know, well, a couple of things. One, I, I look at, you, you could look back and say, well, had I done it differently, right? Had I gone to NYU and, and I, had I had I chosen this as a career path, you know, could I have gone farther? It's sort of a moot thought, right? It is what it is. I have no regrets as to where I am today. So I, I can't, I can't sort of re revisit that. Uh, um, so I do think that there is a certain element of life experience that goes into the creation of a story like this, you know, to, to know what the, what the lead character Cole is feeling in these moments. Um, you know, I, people ask me if this is an autobiographical story and, and I really don't see it as autobiographical. Um, but even though my it hope, seems that it is, well, my hope is that everyone's in a metaphorical a way. Yeah, well, I, I hope is that everyone's going to see a little bit of themselves. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we certainly can identify with it. Yeah. yeah. Right. But I think that you know, with the characters, I knew these characters so well, but we had an amazing cast, and the the magic of having a great cast is, you know, in the table read and in the subsequent rehearsals, you know, I, I wrote these characters, but they become them, yes. and then they bring their whole life experience to that yeah. role. Yeah. And so that dynamic, and you know. Uh, gaining insights from this character that I'm actually meeting for the first time and, and learning from them and, right. and, and, and been informed in this whole new, new way. It was awesome. Uh, so we spent a lot of time sort of working together um, to help to fine tune what you ultimately see on the screen. And my, my message to the actors was always, look, you know, I'm not looking to, to deliver a script. I'm looking to deliver a story. And so um, I, I like the words, I, I wrote them, I like them, but if there are uh, better ones. A way to, yeah. to deliver the scene, then let's do it, right. you know? Right. So, you know, actors love to add to, you know, they, they want to be creative as well. And yeah. if, you're, if you're open to that, it's great. It works out really well. Yeah, I wrote the script for our TV pilot. And uh, when, after we did the read through, the actors came up to us and we're like, they were like, you know, wouldn't it be better if we said it this way or that way? And you know, these were actors telling yeah. me, I don't know crap about crap. And I'm like, <laughs> of course, of course. If you think that fits better, please do it. Because yeah. it'll just make me look better. You well, I mean, so you look like Jay Sanders, who plays the father, J.O. Yeah. Sanders. He's yeah. a remar remarkable actor. And he's he has been at this for, you know, 50 years. He's done countless movies. And so he, every time he had an insight, you know, I immediately wanted to hear what his thoughts were. I mean, why, why would you not? You know, she, he's been in this, in this environment for 50 years. Of course, I'm going to want to take advantage of it. We didn't always agree on, on the view, but I always wanted that insight. And that was same was true of all the cast. They just brought so much uh, perspective and value to it. It's so exciting when you cast the movie or the show, when you see everybody arriving. Yeah. Because you probably cast over Zoom a lot of them, right? Yeah. Cast yeah. Everybody. You cast of, everybody that way. Yeah. And everybody flew in from different areas, right? And But when they arrive and you see them and you start talking about it and the, the energy and the yeah. excitement that builds during that time, yeah. is, it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. So, so yeah, uh, you, and you can see by our enthusiasm that, that it's, 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 you know, we love it as much as you do. Right. But, but, you know, this isn't everybody's passion to, so to sort of wrap this up, we've got all these uh, people over 50 watching, particularly men. Uh, if, if they have a passion other than making a movie or a TV show or something, what kind of advice based on your own experience would you give somebody who's 50 who maybe has been working as an accountant or a, a nurse or whatever, but has always had this passion, whatever it might be, yeah. what kind of advice would you give them about pursuing that, that dream? You know, I think the first step is just going into a crowded room and saying it out loud, just yeah. saying it out loud. You know, um, I think so many people carry with them some dream, some aspiration, and they're just intimidated to put it out there, whether the concern is that 
you know, people are going to think they can't do it or it's, that it's that it's silly or what have you. And, you know, 99 times out of 100, what people are going to say is, wow, that's really cool. How can I help? Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I, we, I had years ago, there was an analyst that um, the young fellow that was working uh, in the office in D.C., and it was a late night. We had a project going on, and and uh, I said to him, I said, Sean, so what's your what's your story? What's your plan? And he said, uh, he said, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I said, come on, you know, if you could do anything, what, you know, what is it that you do? And he said, I don't know. I said, it's not possible that you could be 24 years old and have no earthly idea what you want to do. Do you want to be a race car driver? Do you want to be a chef? I mean, if you could do anything, what would it be? And he said, uh, I think I've always wanted to be like a big, you know, in real estate, be a real estate developer. I said, that's awesome. What are you doing here? <laughs> like, why, why are you sitting here at nine o'clock at night? Like, this doesn't get you there. So, uh, um, you know, you just need to be able to have the, have the comfort and the vulnerability, really, to, to uh, just put it out there. And, and, and then once you do, to never give up. That's great advice. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. so the movie is called The Road to Galena, uh, Road to Galena. coming out uh, next, uh, next month. Yep. And uh, we have seen the uh, preview and uh, um, stay tuned for that. Now, where, is it going to be coming out on like Netflix or DVD or how's, how's so it? It out? is coming out uh, in theaters and on demand July 8th. Okay. Um, and uh, in the first 90 days, it start, I mean, it's, it's already, I think, uh, Apple TV. You can pre-order on Apple TV. Oh, great. And um, it'll be on all the major cable platforms. Um, and folks who want to see it can go to the roadtogalena.com and go to the tickets page, and it's all laid out there for you. All right. We're going to put that on there as well <laughs> as a little blurb. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, go see it uh, if you have a chance, because even though – the cast is somewhat younger. Uh, the story is universal in terms yes. of trying to make out of your life what you really want and not what society or family or expectations are making you do. And yeah. you're a living example of it. We're trying to be a living example of it. And that's why I think people are gonna really, really take to this movie. Well, yeah. I, I, uh, I hope so. I, I, um, uh, I hope so. I'm excited to get it out there. So I appreciate, uh, appreciate being with you guys today. Absolutely. No, that's great. And we will be the first in line. Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Great. So, great. so I need to know, I need to know when your when your pilot comes out. Well, we're we're working on that. We're we're selling it. We have a presentation pilot, which is what they call in showbiz as that's the testing pilot that we would show a studio so they will make it. But uh, to us. It's a 30 minute show. Yeah. You know? We'll we'll send you a trailer so you can take yeah, it. Yeah, do. But, yeah. 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 But um, anyways, Joe, thanks so much for doing this with us. And uh uh good luck on uh on the movie, The Road to Galena. And um I'm sure we're gonna get a lot of people watching it for you. So thanks for being with us. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Appreciate it. Larry, Mike, it was great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you.